In this lesson, we're going to learn how to calculate the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of two or more numbers. So we begin by recalling what we mean by the words factor and multiple. A factor is a number that divides exactly into another without leaving us a remainder. For instance, a factor of 8 is 4, but that's not the only one. We could have 1, 2, or 8. Then a multiple is the result that we get if we multiply a number by another integer. It's a number in that number's times table. Now, there are a couple of techniques for finding highest common factors and lowest or least common multiples. We can do it by observation. Let's have a look at an example. We begin by finding the highest common factor of 10 and 25. The word highest tells us we want to find the largest number that divides into both 10 and 25 without leaving a remainder. This word common is of course because it's common to both 10 and 25. And we could do this by listing out the factor pairs of 10 and 25. One factor pair of 10 is one and 10, since one times 10 is 10 but we could also have two and five. So in ascending or increasing order, the factors of 10 are one, two, five, and 10. Let's repeat this for the number 25. We know that one times 25 is 25. So those are two of our factors. Similarly, five times itself is 25. So we actually have three factors for 25. In ascending order, those are 1, 5, and 25. Now remember, we're trying to find the highest common factor. So we want the largest number that appears in both of these lists. And actually, we can see that that number is 5. We often use HCF and then brackets to represent the highest common factor of two numbers. And so we found that the highest common factor of 10 and 25 is 5. So we're going to use a similar technique to help us find the lowest common multiple of four and seven. This time we want to find the smallest number that appears in both their times tables. And so let's list the first few multiples of four. They are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, we'll keep going a little bit longer, 24 and 28. Now, by definition, the seventh number in this list absolutely has to be a multiple of seven, since it's four times seven. So we can stop there. And now we can repeat this process for seven. We have seven, 14, 21, and we know we can stop at 28, since by definition, the fourth number will be four times seven. It has to be a multiple of four. Now, we want to find the smallest number in both these lists. And in fact, it actually happens to be 28. And so the lowest common multiple of 4 and 7, which I've abbreviated to LCM, is 28. Now it is worth noting that whilst 4 times 7 happen to be the lowest common multiple of 4 and 7, that won't always be the case. The product of the two numbers will always be a multiple, but it won't necessarily be the smallest multiple common to both. So that's one technique, but what do we do when we have much nastier numbers? For instance, find the highest common factor of 32 and 48. We absolutely could use a bit of observation or list out all the factors, but there is another way. With this method, we begin by writing each number as a product of its prime factors. In other words, we're going to draw a prime factor tree. Let's start with the number 32. We know 32 is even, so it has to be divisible by two. And when we divide 32 by two, we get 16. Now two is a prime number, so we circle it and we end this branch here. Then we do the same for 16. Once again, that's even, so it's divisible by two. And we know that 16 divided by two is eight. We circle the two because it's prime and we go back to the number eight and we do it again. Eight is two times four. And of course, two is prime. And we do the same with four. Four is two times two. Now this time we circle both branches and we're finished. And so as a product of its prime factors, 32 is two times two times two times two times two. And we could write this in index form as two to the fifth power, but it's quite unnecessary here. So let's do the same for 48. 48 is two times 24. And we know two is prime, so we're going to circle it. 
24 is 2 times 12. Notice that I'm sticking with 2 because it's one of the easiest numbers to divide by. Then 12 is 2 times 6. We're going to circle the 2 once again. And finally, 6 is 2 times 3. And so we're going to circle both of these and stop here. And so as the product of its prime numbers, 48 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So how does this help us? Well, next, we take all of these prime factors and we pop them in a Venn diagram. Now, of course, the overlap contains each of the numbers in both lists. So we're going to start there. We see we have 1, 2 in both lists. We have another 2 in both lists. We have a third 2 in both lists. And we have a fourth 2 still in both lists. Cross the 2s off as you go along. Next, we take this final 2 and we put it only in the 32 circle. It doesn't go in the overlap because it's not shared with the list for 48. Then we take the number 3 and we put that purely in the 48 circle. Now, of course, the prime factors that these two numbers have in common lie in the overlap, which is sometimes called the intersection of the two circles. And so we find the highest common factor of these two numbers by finding the product of the numbers in the intersection or the overlap. Product, of course, means times. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that's equal to 16. So the highest common factor of 32 and 48 is 16. So the product of the numbers in the overlap or the intersection of the two circles gives us the highest common factor. And this makes a lot of sense since each of these prime numbers is a common factor to both. Let's now see how we would find the lowest common multiple. We're going to demonstrate this by finding the lowest common multiple of 24 and 40. Remember, we begin by writing 24 and 40 as a product of their prime factors. And you might like to pause the video and just practice this skill yourself. So the prime factor trees of each number would look like this. And so we can say that 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and 40 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Once again, we draw a Venn diagram representing the prime factors of 24 and 40. And again, you might like to pause the video now and see if you can construct that yourself. Let's do this. So we have 2 in both lists, and that goes in the intersection. We have another 2 in both lists and a third 2 that appears in both lists. But then we have this 3 that only appears in the list for 24, and this 5 that only appears in the list for 40. We remember that the intersection, the numbers in the overlap, or well, the product of these numbers at least, tells us the highest common factor. So how are we going to find the lowest common multiple? Well, this time it's the product of all of the values, and actually that's called the union. So the lowest common multiple of 24 and 40 will be 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5, which is 120. So this time, the product of all of the numbers is the lowest common multiple. Now, sometimes people worry that there's a repeat here, but remember, we only used each shared factor once in our Venn diagram. Now it's your turn to practice these skills. You're going to do some colouring. You're looking for a resource called Highest Common Factor and Lowest Common Multiple Colour by Number. In this resource, you'll calculate highest common factor and lowest common multiple of various pairs of numbers. Now, on some occasions, you'll be able to do this by using observation or the listing technique, whereas with some of the questions, you'll need to use the Venn diagram method. And so I've included the key points from that method underneath the preview. Spend as long as you want on this and enjoy yourself and we'll see you back here soon. Welcome back. Hopefully that colouring has given you some time to consolidate each technique. Now, the reason these processes are really useful is that they can help us to solve contextual questions. So let's see what that might look like. At a bus station, buses from Twinkle Transport leave every 22 minutes, whilst buses from Beyond Bus Service depart every 15 minutes. Given that a bus from each service leaves at 9am, work out the next time a bus from each service will depart at the same time again. Now is the time to pause the video and spend a few minutes working through this question. Think about everything we've looked at in this lesson to help you. 
We'll begin by establishing the key pieces of information. The first bus leaves every 22 minutes, whereas the other bus leaves every 15 minutes, and they both leave at 9am. And so we're going to need to begin by working out how long it takes for each bus to depart at the same time again. We won't worry about the 9am part at the moment. And so we're actually going to need to begin by working out the lowest common multiple of 15 and 22. Let's use the Venn diagram technique. We know that 15 is 3 times 5, and both 3 and 5 are prime numbers. Similarly, we know 22 is 2 times 11, and both of those are also prime numbers. And so 15 is 3 times 5, whilst 22 is 2 times 11. Let's pop these in a Venn diagram. Now, interestingly, there are no numbers common to both lists. And so we can put the 3 and the 5 in this circle, and the 2 and the 11 in this circle. The lowest common multiple is the product of all of these numbers. It's 3 times 5 times 2 times 11, which is 330. And so the lowest common multiple of these two numbers is 330, which means the buses must depart at the same time every 330 minutes. I'll be honest though, 330 minutes isn't particularly useful for me, so I'm going to convert that into hours, remembering of course that there are 60 minutes in one hour. Let's do 330 divided by 60. Now that's 5 with a remainder of 30. And so this means that each bus returns at the same time every 5 hours and 30 minutes. So we need to work out what time that would be given that they both leave at 9am. 5 hours after 9am is 1400 hours or 2pm. So 5 hours and 30 minutes after 9am is 1430 or 2.30pm. Now notice here that I've given both representations, the 24 hour clock and the 12 hour clock. It's really important that you use one of these forms and if you do use the 12 hour clock to include PM in your answer. And that concludes our lesson on highest common factors and lowest common multiples. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you back here soon.